King Mataniah, better known as King Zedekiah, was the final king to rule the southern kingdom of Judah up to its destruction in 586 BC. His 11-year reign is covered in 2 Kings, 2 Chronicles, and the book of Jeremiah. Since he is the last ruling king of Judah, his reign covers the transition from kingdom age to Gentile rule. As such, showing evidence for his existence along with the events that surround his reign provides assurance that the biblical accounts are historically reliable. His story starts with his father Josiah being killed by Pharaoh Necho of Egypt in 609 BC at the Battle of Megiddo. His son Jehoahaz was appointed king by the common people of Israel. This detail says something because only prophets could anoint kings. Jehoahaz's rule only lasted three months as Necho removed him and appointed his brother from another mother, Eliakim, as king. Necho renamed him Jehoiakim as an example to the people of Judah that they were now considered a vassal state of Egypt. In 605 BC, the Babylonian army under Nebuchadnezzar conducted its first siege of Jerusalem and took captives like Daniel back to Babylon. In 598, Nebuchadnezzar took Jehoiakim to Babylon with his nephew Jehoiachin ascending to the throne. During Jehoiachin's short reign, the second siege took place with Nebuchadnezzar appointing Mataniah king and renaming him Zedekiah as a reminder to the people that they were a vassal state of Babylon. Zedekiah eventually tries to revolt against Nebuchadnezzar even though Jeremiah repeatedly warned him not to. This led to the third and final siege with Jerusalem and the temple being destroyed in 586 BC. Zedekiah tries to flee with his family but is eventually caught with Nebuchadnezzar killing his sons right in front of him before blinding him. With this story and any other found in the Bible, the critic will always say, where's the evidence? So here are three reasons why the accounts for King Zedekiah found in the Bible are historically reliable. Number one, the Jerusalem Chronicle. The Jerusalem Chronicle, also known as the Nebuchadnezzar Chronicle, is part of the Assyrian Babylonian Chronicle collection that is currently in the British Museum. The Chronicle starts off by saying, in the seventh year in the month Chislev, the king of Babylon assembled his army and after he invaded the land of Hatti, he laid siege to the city of Judah. Comparing this to the biblical account in 2 Kings 24 says, Jehoiachin was 18 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned in Jerusalem three months. At that time the servants of Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon came up against Jerusalem, and the city was besieged. The chronicle continues on saying, On the second day of the month of Adar, he conquered the city and took the king prisoner. In verse 12 says, Jehoiachin, the king of Judah, went up, to the king of Babylon, he and his mother and his servants and his princes and his officers, and the king of Babylon took him in the eighth year of his reign. Now an observant student will see that the chronicle says in the seventh year while the Bible says in the eighth year. This might sound problematic, but they are referring to the same year. It all depends on how cultures counted the reigns of their rulers. There are two types of counting systems, accession and non-accession. Accession starts with zero as the first year, while non-accession starts with one as the first year. Examples of accession counting are with teachers' salaries. Teachers are considered on step zero for their first year of work, and the start of the second year moves them to step one. Another example is how we refer to how old we are. Months for babies up until one, and then we go by years following. An example of non-accession counting is with the presidency. The presidency is always referred to as his first year right from his inauguration. Nebuchadnezzar's reign started in 605 BC. So non-accession years would start counting in 605 BC, while accession years would start counting in 604 BC. Judah used non-accession while the Babylonians used accession. We can see that the Bible starts at 605 and the Chronicle starts at 604. So when the Bible says the 8th year and the Chronicle says the 7th year, you can see that they are both referring to the same year. The Chronicle goes on to say that Nebuchadnezzar installed in his place a king of his own choice, and after he had received rich tribute, he sent forth to Babylon. The Bible says that the king of Babylon made Mataniah his father's brother's king in his stead, and changed his name to Zedekiah. We can easily see that the accounts in the Chronicle and in the Bible perfectly match. Another detail on the Chronicle is its reference to Nebuchadnezzar left after receiving a rich tribute. The Bible says, And he carried out thence all the treasures of the house of the Lord, and the treasures of the king's house, and cut in pieces all the vessels of gold which Solomon king of Israel had made in the temple of the Lord, as the Lord had said. This connection gives validation that King Solomon was real and the temple was built by him. The last part of verse 13, as the Lord had said, is referring to the Babylonian prophecy found in Isaiah 39. Prophesied over a hundred years earlier, Isaiah said, 
Behold, the days come, that all is in thine house, and that which thy fathers have laid up until store unto this day shall be carried to Babylon. Nothing shall be left, saith the Lord. Zedekiah's story continues on in 2 Kings chapter 25, saying Jerusalem was sieged from Zedekiah's ninth year to his eleventh year, with verse 8 referencing that this was Nebuchadnezzar's nineteenth year. Verses 9 and 10 say that Nebuchadnezzar burnt the house of the Lord and the king's house and all the houses of Jerusalem, and every great man's house burnt he with fire. And all the army of the Chaldees that were with the captain of the guard break down the walls of Jerusalem round about. This brings us to the second reason to trust that biblical accounts are reliable are found in the burnt layers in Jerusalem. Found in the city of David excavations are burnt layers from this conquest. Jeremiah recorded that when Jerusalem ran out of food, the Babylonians finally broke through. Empty storage yards dating to this period were excavated along with Babylonian arrowheads along the old city wall. The third reason to know the accounts about Zedekiah are reliable are the Babylonian officials referred to in the Bible. In 2 Kings 25-8 says, Nebuzaradan, captain of the guard, led the attack. Also in Jeremiah 39-3, And all the princes of the king of Babylon came in and sat in the middle of the gate, even Nergal Sherezer, Sam Garnebo, Sarsechim, Rabsaris, Nergal Sherezer, and Rabmeg. Other than the Bible referring to Nebuchadnezzar numerous times, the mentioning of these other official gives the reader assurance that the author was an eyewitness to these events. The three highlighted earlier are found in Nebuchadnezzar Prism in the Istanbul Archaeological Museum and the Babylonian Clay Tablet in the British Museum. We can see that from the Jerusalem Chronicle, the burnt layers in Jerusalem, the accurate naming of Babylonian officials, that the accounts of King Zedekiah found in 2 Kings, 2 Chronicles, and the Book of Jeremiah can be seen as historically accurate and not myth. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button below to stay up to date with the new videos as they come out.